episode of Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. I'm Jeffrey Kahn and coming to you from Barcelona, Spain, where I happen to be visiting uh, one of my uh, favorite clients, Finboot. And uh, today I'm, I'm uh, delighted uh, with the opportunity to interview uh, one of Finboot's executives, uh, Noslin Suarez, who is an account executive uh, with Finboot uh, based here in Barcelona. Noslin, welcome to Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. Thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really excited to talk about what we are doing. Yeah, I'm very excited too. I've, I've been, my association with Finboot goes back to 2019. Yeah. And uh, so throughout all of that time, you and I have had a, uh, a working uh, connection, um, beginning with, uh, I think, uh, my first meeting with Finboot in Madrid in 2020. Uh, and we uh, here we are. We had an event. Yes, we had an event uh, with uh, Repsol, and um, uh, then the pandemic hit. <laughs> Everything <laughs> went virtual. Uh, and uh, but I, I'm delighted with the opportunity to be back. Uh, let's uh, uh, start though uh, with a bit of um, sort of uh, of your personal background. Tell, uh, just share a little bit about your personal story and how you ended up in a, a technology company uh, of all places. Yeah, I have been in technology uh, for a long time, so. My background is from academia, but it's science, so I have been like a special entity in, in all my, my career because yes. I was in the university and studied physics. I was only three girls in a, in a classroom of more than 40 boys, so <laughs> really hard experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my background is from there, so technical physics. After I did a master, I uh, studied in the light. I, we decided that we want to pursue in, in academia. And we arrived, me and my husband arrived here in Spain to do a um, PhD, so a, a doctorate in quantum mechanics um, at ICFO, a really great institution. It was a long time um, of a PhD because it was almost five years. At that point, uh, we saw that academia was not the right uh, place to, to keep because you need to constantly do do different kind of uh, postdoc in different yes. locations and we want something more stable. And also at that point, I started the curiosity to really work in an application or um, an area that really touched persons. So we were working with atoms, electrons, light, and it was everything <laughs> more like a theoretical, let's yes. say. Yeah. Uh, and part of my research was trying to approach that. So how the atosecond uh, pulse can impact in medicine and in person. So I decided to start to look at that point, so industry, uh, and decided to move and find a fantastic opportunity in a now in a nanosatellite company. So working with satellite image and, and AI, so trying to interrogate uh, the, the satellite image to get inside that can help to farmers. Uh, and mm. I really enjoyed the way that that was working, like really targeting a problem. So I decided to stay out of academia and, and after the opportunity to work with Finboot uh, arrived. So Juan and I, we know from the PhD and the, the academia world, and he started to open the, the, the position of business or try to look how the application can fit in a problem, and I decided to join the team. Yeah, that why was not? Yeah. five years ago. Yeah, right, yeah. D about the same time as I uh, also started working with yeah. uh, Finboot. And what, do, what does the account executive role entail? The account executive role, I would say, is mm, in Finboot is quite mixed because we are in a small company and I have been here from the beginning, so uh, what I am doing here at Finboot is a kind of a mixed role between uh, identifying that uh, potential industries, company that they can have a problem that our solution can solve, mm. but also doing all the configuration and all the uh, management of the account when they come uh, as a client. No? So my role is uh, uh, having like an overview of the whole sales process, but also having all the involvement with the client doing the implementation and understanding all the new problems that they can have, helping them with the adoption of the tool, uh, like changing the main the mindset of the users to to promote the use of this new digital technology. So my role is, is a bit uh, a mix. Uh, I really enjoy it and I think this is one of the things that I really like working for a small company and in Finbo that I have all these vision and this mixed role 
Well, it's the, yeah, it's very it's interesting system. because you have a science background, but yeah. as you've kind of hinted at, much of the challenge of of technology is actually not the science or the technology. It is it is encouraging organizations to embrace change. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a moment. Uh, but let's first, if you, if you don't mind, maybe you could share a couple of uh, use cases uh, where organizations have worked with um, the technologies from FinBoot in order to affect real meaningful change. I'm really interested to learn more about uh, yeah. what these look like. Well, we have some key clients. Uh, I will not focus on one because I think uh, they are different clients that have different pain points yeah. that can highlight the, the main use of our tool. Uh, the first one is Savic, no? that is one of our key clients, and the work with them arrived for the pain point of having a sustainable product in their production that they need to trace. So and Sa this is sustainable plastic. Yeah, and, and Savic, just to be clear, is the uh, petrochemical arm of Saudi, Saudi Aramco, Aramco. Yeah. Uh, which is the world's largest uh, oil company. Yeah. And um, uh, so by definition, probably one of the world's largest petrochemical companies, too. So it's, uh, so if Sabic is looking at this world of, of um, uh, uh, track and trace and green supply chain and, and sustainability, and they're using Finboot's technologies, I think it yeah. underscores that uh, the technology must be pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, by definition, right? yeah. Sabic can choose anything in the world to, to, to work with, and, and, uh, but you're working with Sabic. Tell me a little bit about the, the process and what it is that they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, so what they have is, well, nowadays, sustainable products and sustainability is a trend topic. So they are a big oil and gas company, but mm. they are trying to shift no, to use more sustainable products and their production of sustainable products start to increase. So the first pain, pain point was to trace that sustainable product, the sustainable so they, plastic. They made they make the product, but they, they didn't know the where product. it went in the supply chain. So that's the first step. Yeah. Just trace it. Also, they have uh, the same um, equipment to produce base, uh, uh, fuel-based uh, product and sustainable. So at the end, they use the same cracker to uh -huh. mix and to create the polymer. So there is a process of mass balance in place. Uh -huh, where you cannot trace the um, the problem that you have is you cannot segregate the process of production so everything is centering on the cracking and you you need to trace it digitally so that is where our tool uh, and, and 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 add the value and also uh, the idea of creating ecosystem for them was also this securing the um, um, supplier of uh, sustainable raw material and also delivering more information to the final customer about that sustainable product that they are uh, that they are building and, and producing and the idea of Marco was that no we help them to get operational efficiencies with this tracing of the uh, sustainable product and the accountability of the mass balance process but also to create an ecosystem to share information and to add more value to to their products in the market I think the, uh, oh, the, but it does start though with the the natural objection that you would first hear in the industry, which is we cannot trace molecules through a, a single cracker because uh, we, uh, that's either technically not possible or it's uh, a problem that we have attempted to solve but been not able to solve. And yet Sabic is now solving this problem. They're yeah. actually able to do this. Yeah, because the idea is, do we really need to trace the molecule physically or we have this really good digital tool that we can put in place that similar to us know that they, they are immutable in the way that they hold the data and they are able to share with your supplier and your customer so yeah. you really do not need to to trace the molecule you need to trust in the new digital tools and implement new digital strategy to uh, get this problem solved. And this is what Savvy, Sepsa, Repsol, other of our clients are doing with, with our tool. Yeah, this is an important insight, which is uh, if you have high confidence and trust in the digital side of the process and that it is marrying up to the physical side, then you can have trust in the physical side. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and that's uh, a, an important uh, feature. Uh, are there other examples besides Savic? Savic is one uh, large and well-known company, but, uh, uh, but there are others that are all uh, yeah. working hard on this problem. Yeah, we are working with Repsol, not only on um, sustainable uh, plastic or packaging that is uh, uh, Savic, but also we are working with Sepsa, also tracing one part of their production that is mm. uh, more uh, green. 
So we are we are tracing a raw material that they produce to th that is used in, in soaps and, and detergents. Uh, with them, we have a uh, scale up the the project. So we start working just in a facility in Spain, and now we have Canada, we have Brazil, uh, Spain, and also China. So it's, it's a, 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 a well-established uh, project with them. And we have Repsol, where we have different vertical verticals with them. So one, like uh, adding uh, transparency in the process that they uh, share information about the samples that move inside of the yeah. complex. Another tracing biofuel that is used for maritime industry and for ground transport also green hydrogen so it's a really a, um, a penetration in the in the digital aspect inside of the company uh, you, you touched on a couple of things though that um, resonated with me one was uh, that the, it sounds like the same technology is being deployed across multiple international economies this is not just a uh, uh, a single instance inside a single company, you actually can deploy this internationally. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, that that is the idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is the idea because uh, the raw materials are international, so they are usually coming They're from commodities. different places. Yeah, the course. commodities. So yeah. the, the idea is to trace all this and to operate in different continents and, and different industry. It's like a thing, like a kind of exoskeleton inside of the same company yeah. to connect the different facilities and, and the different uh, industries uh, that they have around the globe. And what what kind of results are companies telling you that they're able to achieve once they're able to do this? For instance, are they able to say, you know, well, you've mentioned operational efficiencies have cropped yeah. up, but what, about, what, what, what can you share some examples of what they declare as, as being benefits or results that they're seeing? Yeah, one uh, clear example is, for example, in the auditing process. So all these sustainable process, they have certain regulation behind that uh, companies need to go in auditing yes. to get the certification and to get certified that everything is regarding to, to the law. And we help them with this. So in our system, everything is au auditable. So they can go to our system and have all the information there. So they are savings in time, they are savings in cost, and also they are an, an a speed up in the way that they communicate this result with the entity bodies and also with their customers. Um, other operational uh, efficiency that we have is that we replace most of the manual um, work inside of the company mm -hmm. and that mitigates risk. So the way that these companies operate before having uh, the, our digital tool was using, for example, spreadsheets or paper. Yep. So now everything is connect and the whole thing have visibility with a tool that is uh, shareable. So the information is shareable, is immutable, and you can have a, a, a trust uh, a trace around all the change that that happening in the process and, and information that you are storing are they uh, have they shared uh, that the level of capability or expertise required to be able to do s this sort of sustainability re and reporting and auditing is is now uh, reduced in other words in, in North America one of the challenges we see is uh, there's a shortage of of uh, talent young people who want to join the industry at the same time we're layering on the this, this requirements for auditing and compliance and uh, these these are now in conflict because we have manual processes for doing this work but we don't have the manual labor to do the work so yeah. are, are your are your international clients making the same observation that this is somehow solving a, a potential labor problem yeah 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 true uh, and also because uh, the way that the process are changing now and then and and the regulation is enforcing to have more transparency, uh, uh, transparency in the way that you report, in the way that you collect the data, yeah. and manually work is not possible. Also, uh, the idea is to implement new solutions in a way that people can handle better the data. Yeah. Yeah, make it all, all uh, lower cost, less hands on the on the data and the like. And the volume of data we're talking about is is enormous when you yeah. start tracing these these commodities through the supply chain. I'm sure you must find uh, uh, some uh, resistance to these ideas when you first enter organizations. Things like, oh, but you can't do that, and you can't do mass balancing, yeah. and you can't do this. What are the sorts of objections you typically hear? Well, the typical objection is people that do not want to learn how to use a new tool, even if that is saving time and, and saving money to the company, no? Because they used to do the things in the old way, and sometimes they, they do not. Yeah. Well, they work. They, they work in, in, 
in the old days, but now that is regulation that you need to communicate more data, that the um, amount of product that they are producing is increasing, yeah. that is not, is not possible, no, it's not a scalable. And we have, uh, of course, we, we, we face some resistance to, to that change course, and, yeah. to, and to the adoption of the new technology. But for that, what we do is to have like key champions inside of the company that can motivate, uh, do a lot of training, have a really open communication and transparency with the needs of the user because each, yes, each, each um, use case is unique mm -hmm. and each problem is unique. Even if we have a, a, a commune audience that is the oil and gas industry, Repsol, Savic, Sepsa, they have different problems uh, in, in, in their operation. So this communication with the user and really understanding how can we add value more than saying you need to use this tool is how really can we help you to migrate from that type of, of, of work to the new one. So communication and really learning and, and listening to, to their problems. That is the, the main recipe that we use. Yeah, are you seeing technologists object to using these tools because they fear cybersecurity risks or they fear uh, the technology is uh, too, too novel or too risky? Are, are you hearing that kind of objection? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can hear, for example, no, blockchain is not for us. That is a high level. We just need the traceability tool. And yeah. it's when you say, Okay, you need a traceability tool. We have the traceability tool and we also have blockchain. So why do not use it? You have both. Yeah. And this is the way that you start to uh, enter and, and try to, to plant that C on, on the user. No, it's something that maybe you don't need now, but it's something that is adding you some value because the resistance is there. It's like, a, oh, this is too fancy, no? This is yeah. too fancy for me. My process is simple. Your process is simple now, but you are scaling up your production. So it will not be simple. You want to sell in other countries. So this gives you the capacity to share data and in a way is having these conversations with them. Yeah. Do you, do you hear cost presented as a, as a reason not to change? Like this is going to cost me more and therefore I shouldn't do it? Uh, cost, I will not say that is the first um, uh, stopper that we have. Or, 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 or it's not presented as the main challenge. No, here. it's so not the main challenge. It's, it's, it's more about, about changing the mindset. No, yeah. it's like this is the way that I have been always operating. Why do I have to change to to a new tool? Yeah. Or how? Why I need to update? Yeah. Why change my process? It works, and uh, yeah. yeah, there's probably in many cases if you've hand built a spreadsheet and it does the, does the job for you, you 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 have some pride of ownership over that, and yeah. and so letting go is is the challenge. But but scale is the issue. Yeah, I know in Calgary, uh, one of my uh, clients uh, said that in order to uh, be able to trace, as an example, just with uh, uh, gas and oil production, they would need an entire office tower of manual people uh, who would do the tracing. He says tech. Technically, it's just not feasible to do it any other way yeah. uh, because we just simply don't have the, 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 the manpower. Um, let's turn to the, um, the, the, the untapped potential here. What do you see as the, uh, the, the, the possibilities presented by these, these, uh, these tools to help reframe the oil and gas industry's uh, supply chain so that they're, they're more transparent and more auditable and, and the like? There is a, a significant untapped potential for digital technologies. Uh, one is real-time asset tracking. So um, we need to really trace what is happening in real time uh, in a way to, um, to do predictive maintenance, for example, um, yeah. to do uh, more uh, analytics on, on, on and predict the future, no? what is happening with the market, what will happen with my production. So I think that there is a, a, a lot of, of challenge that the oil and gas industries have that they can be solved with uh, digital technologies. And there is a lot of a space to, to implement new process, uh, to implement new ways of work and to get benefit from that. And are the companies that have um, deployed uh, the, these tools, uh, are, are you seeing them taking them into be more of an enterprise um, enterprise solution for them? I mean, it sounds like Repsol is one example. Put put the technology in uh, initially in one area, but they're seeing clear use for it in, in others, which, which suggests that these are not just point solutions and one-time solutions. They're actually much broader than that. Is that a fair assessment? 
Yeah, yeah. I, and I think that is because we need flexible solutions. So flexible solution because, as I said, each company have a similar problem, but it's not the same. Yeah. So there is a um, They all have difference. hand-tooled processes. Is and the also challenge, yeah. because a, a company uh, needs to have the possibility to interconnect process. Because at the end, in the same company, all the processes are connected, but we yeah. have different solutions that just solve one part of the process. So we need something that is flexible enough to connect everything inside of the company. Yeah. And, and this is something that, that we can do with digital tools like, like us. Yeah. How uh, outside of um, energy, what other other uh, industrial sectors do you see as as offering potential? Because as, as you say, as an account director, you're not you're, you're focused on it, nor is, or able to to touch a variety of different industries. Which ones close to energy do you see other potential here? Well, and that is uh, one of our main uh, focus, no, to 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 find other industries that have similar pain points, and, and one that we have identified is the mining industry. Mining. And, and, and metals, no, because also tracing sustainable products, no, and we have recyclable aluminum or recyclable steel. Lithium. Yeah, yeah. that is the idea Batteries. also. They are consumer goods, so we are all um, conscious about what we get from supermarket, and, and, and this is another area where transparency and digital tool can really help. Yeah. We are we have some customer and conversation on, on those areas and clear examples of how our digital tool that is uh, mainly focused on chemical and oil and gas is also used in, in other in other areas, for example, with Hestamp or Big yeah. Sugar Steel or other of our clients. Well, my, mining actually is very close to oil and gas because it's an extractive industry. Uh, the, uh, the the oil sands mines in Canada, just another example, even in, I think, in um, um, other, other, other different and similar oil um, basins around the world also are mineable versus uh, the traditional oil and gas extraction, drilling wells. Uh, so mining makes complete sense to me that it would be a, a similar uh, place. Uh, and, um, and also showing, uh, you know, same challenge. Where did this product come from? Um, certain minerals out of Africa, for instance, are concerning yeah. to, to countries because, you know, children are being used to mine the, the product. And so the ability to, to, to prove that that's not the case is, I think, valuable. Um, so uh, you, uh, you have the advantage, I think, of, uh, of, of seeing the world, and you've seen it from a variety of lenses, like the science lens and the people lens. Uh, what kind of lessons do you take away from, from your experience in uh, helping organizations uh, deal with, with innovation and change? Humans are the, are, 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 needs to be the focus. So when, when, when we talk about... It's not about the technology. Yeah. It's about people. Exactly. Yeah. You, you need to, we have a great technology, but if we do not understand the needs of the people uh, as individual and, and what they they will need to be motivated to use a, a new technology or to implement a new process. So the key is that it's not it's not the technology itself; it's more the human factor. Yeah, it's very very important to think about about people. Yeah, um, and uh, that's probably true in organizations. You know, is just surrounding yourself with good people is probably one of the keys. And, and so where do you see the future going in, in energy? Are you excited about the prospects of, of uh, higher sustainability in energy as a, as a future? Yeah, I, I think that that is a really uh, exciting way to see the industry because the industry always has been seen like a, a exploding the, the earth and, yep, and yeah. we, this plastic is bad. <clears throat> but now... With regulation and also with uh, with the stakeholders and, and with the community, you no, know, like pushing to have more sustainable processes and product, uh, the oil and gas industry is really changing, and the energy industry is really changing. They are really pay attention to to sustainability. They are really concerned. They are they are they are willing to implement new technologies and to address these problems and to offer transparency and and to do things different. So there is a, a big opportunity now. It's, it's like a, a different market, a different industry, because we see that there is people that want to change things. One of the reasons why I was really keen to have you come on the podcast is because you are um, a woman, yeah, you're in technology, you have a PhD in science, uh, you could even be, have been a rocket scientist uh, for all <laughs> intents and purposes. You said when you did your undergraduate degrees, uh, you were shocked at the uh, low level of, of, of participation in, the, in, the, in that educational program by women. Um, what, what advice would you share if there's young women listening to this podcast? What advice would you share with them? 
allow your dreams, really. There will be a lot of barrier, um, but you will get also a lot of support. <clears throat> and I think that um, the sky is the limit. So really, uh, when I started my career, I saw so many boys and we were only three, three girls and it was quite scary, no? Because you said, so maybe this is not for me. Yeah. I should go to another career. But, but really, it's like to pursue your, your dreams, uh, to be keen and, and, and to really uh, put all your effort on that. So there is, now it's, it's true that it's changing. So society is more aware about the role of women in, in other position and we have this space so like people like me can can came here and encourage uh, other other girls to to join these uh, tech careers but but the idea is is that to pursue so really really be persistent go for it yeah Noslin, it's been such a pleasure to uh, see you in person again uh, and uh, have you on the podcast thank you so much for joining me today thank you you for inviting me really nice day this has been another episode of Digital Innovations in Oil and Gas. Uh, please join me in a week's time. We'll have another episode. Bye for now. Bye.